ready. Tell me. Okay, so we're, we have here a Chinese elm that belongs to Charlie. Uh, and he dug this out of the trash. And look how uh, it's going to be a really nice tree. But it was chopped down with an axe. It's got some marks right here, or maybe that was a saw. And they just, they just you know, cut it real hard. So uh, now that it's healthy and growing a little bit, we're going to do some work on the deadwood to try to make it look a little nicer. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to tie some of these uh, new branches out of the way. So we don't want to take them out just yet. Maybe they'll come out sometime, but not right now. We're going to just going to tie them out of the way. Okay, so then just to kind of help us out, we're going to mark out the parts we want to take out. Uh, uh, this is all dead, and you can see you can see in here. This is live tissue here, and this is dead. So we're going to carve out a good portion of that, and we're going to kind of blend it into the trunk. So just to show you, we're going to come down here. And we're going to. This is dead too on the top. So we're going to take out a little here, so we can get rid of these cuts. So we just kind of do it a little bit at a time and hope for the best. Ground it off mm -hmm. anyway. Yep.
I noticed a rock in there. I think that's a rock, huh? I don't know, right? You're right. Yeah, that's a rock, huh? Wow, it's really sticking there. Not gonna come out unless we carve a bunch of stuff off so we could just leave it. Leave it, huh? Yeah. Okay, so we noticed that there's some dead wood here and some decay in the middle here. That's black already. So we want to <clears throat> cut the tree in such a way that the water will drain out of that. It won't stand in this hole and make it worse. But it, decay is a natural part of stuff that you collect. Like you're going for Yamadori, you're going to find trees with, with dead centers. And they're, they're kind of cool. We just want to get it so that when we're done carving, whatever falls in here, rainfall, water, from watering, will actually drain out over here. See, and it's already kind of found its way out from being wet and rotting. So we'll just scrape away at this until we've got a nice channel. Or go ahead and run out. Can be very interesting. So now we're going to have to water the tree from the sides and make no, sure not a... No, I don't think so because it doesn't matter if the if all the dead wood rots out. Uh, we got roots over here. We got roots over there. Well, uh, in fact, there's a technique for carving trees where you make a, a hole and you keep it full of water all the time. Eventually, it'll eat out the center of a tree. Works really nice on apples because apples... Uh, like crab apples, they naturally, in old age, will have hollow trunks. So you can make a hollow trunk by just keeping water in the center. Because actually, the only part of the tree that's actually alive is just under the bark. And uh, as long as you've got roots coming out from the edge of the bark in the ground, the tree's not going to die. So we want to refine this part so it doesn't look straight across, and we want to taper it this a little bit and work on this edge so that I, the coarse grinder the big grinder is a little hard to control so we want to work on this a little bit and then we'll seal up this edge here's here's you can see the live edge right this space right here between the bark just under the bark is the is the critical part that will uh, lose water maybe die back a little but uh, this this is an elm and they're really tough so uh whether we do it now or later, we need to finish carving the contour on this one. And uh, we may have to and see if we can't get out as much of the rotten wood as possible. In the valley, if you don't, it's hot and dry enough that if you don't like purposely water, pour water into it every day, this will dry out in here and won't, won't hurt anything. And you can actually you know, clean it up one time and coat it with a wood preserver or something like that but it even if it eats out the whole trunk of this tree eventually that's okay it, it'll, it'll just look old and really cool 
So we'll get a, another carver and we'll we'll work on refining these lines a little. Okay. Okay. These grinding wheels come in several sizes. This is a regular four and a half inch grinding wheel and it has these carbide cones on here. They're pretty expensive, but they're really good for flattening the bottom of a deciduous tree to get it into a bonsai pot. You know, when you cut it off, sometimes it's got the wrong angle. You can turn it over, get it exactly the way you want it. It's also good for uh, making big cuts in uh, collected material. It works really good on California juniper. The thing about it is, is this will load up, and you can see that it's starting to load up with wood, especially if the wood's uh, wet and not dry. The good thing is you can take it off of here and use a propane torch, like camping propane, a little torch, and burn that stuff out of there, and it, it'll, it'll cut again. It won't be loaded up. It burns right out. Here's a, a smaller version of the same thing. But it'll load up even faster because the teeth are finer. So we're going to work up, use it to work on the next step to uh, to refine this cut. We're going to try to get closer to this uh, butt, these buds here, so that they can bring them up and be part of the top. The thing I don't like about this is it sounds like a dentist drill. <laughs> I'm going to carve away the dead wood so it can start, uh, get into the cambium and start healing a little. So we want to get back to, to, uh, to healthy wood.
impression that can this part become be, can become part of the of the whole carving? You know, it's whatever you want to do. If you'd like to, this is your tree, Charlie. You would, would you like to do it that way? Maybe, maybe. All right, but let me finish this. And okay. I'll go over there and get. Maybe we'll get the big grinder and, again, huh? Yeah. Get it again. I can get a loop nice. So you can see now that, at least in most places, you can see that there's white wood, which is not rotted, and there's a kind of a faint green line around here, and that's what we want to preserve for before we get done. We'll put a little bit of wound sealer on it because it's in the dry time of year. And uh, but Charlie would like to have this wound blended into this one, so we might have to get rid of the rock first now. Yeah, we'll have to get a chisel or do something and try to get that out of there. So let's, we'll be back in a minute. You know, we... We might need to take this whole piece out right here. Because mm -hmm. it goes all the way to this old shoe. Yeah. I mean, we might have to get rid of all that now. We're going to try to get rid of some of it. It's not going to hurt mm -hmm. this tree, really. Are you... mm -hmm. There you go. It goes all the way through. <laughs> it goes all the way through. Yeah, see there? Wow. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So this tree is going to have um, some nice history behind. <laughs> yeah. It seems like it's already had some history. Mm -hmm. used to look like one well, but like one but now two now we're gonna have to carve this pretty big and leave try to leave this ridge maybe mm -hmm. yeah exactly. what do you think yeah go for it so let me get some tape okay so that maybe i can actually wire that so when we removed the rock we found out that the hole is rotten all the way through so you can see daylight on the other side so we'll change our carving plans just a little bit We might as well get rid of that big round scar. Mm -hmm. Make it. Yeah.
All this was uh, roots once. Looks like it, huh? Mm -hmm. Nice thing about elms, you can get some pretty nice trees from below the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to clean this up just a little bit. And we're going to get it even smaller piece of equipment and work on it a little bit uh, best thing to do though is to wait to do your finished stuff until you see uh, it's going to react to this and maybe some edges will die and stuff like that so there's no point in getting in a hurry it'll be several years before the top is it comes along or maybe three or four years before it starts looking real good but in the meantime some of this will change Maybe this part will die, maybe it won't, you know, maybe you'll get sprouts around. But uh, we're going to do a little bit more carving in here. While we don't have limbs in the way, we're going to try to reach in here and do this inside as much as we can. Because if this lives, it'll probably sprout out, you know, or mm -hmm. could very well sprout out mm -hmm. and make it almost impossible to... to get in there and work on it some more so we're gonna monkey with it just a little bit more but this is gonna be slow This goes kind of slow, so we're not going to bore you to death. We'll turn it off for a little bit and bring you back and show you what happens. Because it's July and real dry where we live, uh, we're going to seal the live edge a little bit to prevent a uh, little pullback uh, of the live tissue before it starts to grow back again. So this will just speed up the process. Uh, because it, not because it helps it heal, but because it helps it not die more. We did all the rest of it already. So you don't have to do the middle. You don't have to do the whole cut. Just the, just the live edge. And what are we using for that purpose, Ed? This is a grafting compound. It comes from Japan. It's kind of green. A lot of people mix it with water, so and they use it. Uh, I take a a jar, and you can get the rubber cement and it has a jar with a with a little brush in the lid and you can clean that out and mix this with water and use a little brush you don't want to get it on your hands mm. plus if you dilute it a little bit it'll do the same work and go a lot farther yeah and faster yeah all right sir we're pretty done here all right let's uh, let's take this off 
so yeah so we're thinking on uh on making uh the canopy short like around this over here around this yeah, probably this big kind of a triangle like this triangle you know yeah. yeah so yeah uh if you guys like the video please subscribe and and share and and uh hit the uh the ring bell so you guys can see uh, um so you guys can get a notice when whenever we get a, bit, a new video to the channel so yeah and uh this this is gonna be uh the boss here ed clark so if you want to introduce yourself ed yeah I, a little bit i'm a, a nurseryman who is, is has a, a passion for bonsai like the rest of you guys i grew nursery stock all my life but now i get to focus on on doing bonsai and raising Pre bonsai, we got four acres of it here, mostly shohin, but we got some bigger trees. But I like doing the little carving; it's fun. So enjoy having a good time. If you want to try it, try it. You know, see how it goes. <laughs> All right, guys. See you into the next video.